When it comes to style, did you know that shoes are half the battle? Did you know that the right pair of shoes can change your life? Because it can, and I'm not exaggerating. Never underestimate the power of shoes. The right pair of shoes can completely transform you and change your look. I believe that there is nothing more important in your wardrobe than the right pair of shoes for you. I don't care if you're a cowboy, you work in construction, you're a nurse, you're a lawyer, you're a teacher, you're an executive. Your shoes say so much about you. So here's how to make sure you always put your best foot forward. No matter how much or how little you have, where you live, what you do, how old you are, you too can have some style. Welcome, my name is Moshe Lundstrom Halbert. I'm a fashion journalist and style expert, and I believe that what you wear is self-care. This channel discusses all matters of personal style and helps you find yours. So forget the trends, lose the logos, burn the chinos, and break the damn rules. It's time to wear the clothes and not the other way around. I want to inspire you to explore what makes you feel like your truest self because authenticity is key to style. So if that interests you, go ahead and subscribe, like, and ring the bell, and we'll continue on this journey of self-discovery together. This is a conversation and I want to invite you to ask me as many questions as you want here in the comment section or over on Instagram at Moshe Lundstrom. I will answer them all and you know what? They might just inspire a future episode of Have Some Style. Ready to dive into today's topic of why shoes are half the battle? I sure am. This is something I could talk about all day long. I was actually once the fashion director of a magazine called Footwear News that was dedicated just to shoes. So this is a topic I'm extremely passionate about and well-versed in, and I hope that I can inspire my fellow shoe lovers here and also cultivate a new audience of people that want to learn more about shoes because it really is its own fascinating subculture, and I want to help you find the best shoes for you because I really believe they can be transformational. So stay with us till the end of this video where I'm going to be recapping these three fundamental principles and giving you a bit of style homework. So just remember with what I'm saying, we're all in this together. This is a process of continual self-improvement when it comes to your personal style and nobody is perfect. So with that said, buckle up. So hand on heart, here are three things about shoes I know to be absolutely true. Number one, Shoes that tell a story make an outfit. Not all outfits are fits, if you know what I mean. Not every combo is a showstopper. Sometimes we aren't getting dressed for the gram. Sometimes we just literally need to put on clothes and get out the door. Also sometimes be it laundry day, PMS, you're traveling, decision fatigue, you're running late. You just need to throw on clothes and move on with your life. I get it. I'm often there. And on these days, we often end up in something a little basic, a little ho-hum, a little drab. This, this my friends, is really where shoes come in and can totally save the day and virtually any outfit. I'm a firm believer that if you get the shoes right, the rest is so much easier. And shoes can really save you from a whole litany of wardrobe woes. That's why, I don't know if anyone can relate to this, but I often start with my shoes. Shoes are incredibly grounding after all. They're the thing that you wear that is in closest contact with the earth, with the floor, rooting you. And so for me, and this might work for you, it might not, I like to first think about what shoes do I feel like wearing today? What do I feel like stepping into? Because I know that my shoes really do affect how I feel and how I look and my mood. So I'll start with my shoes, which is something you can try as well. So while it's really helpful to have some you know, classic shoe styles in your wardrobe. So classics could be everything from, you know, a clean cut white sneaker. It could be a black pointy pump. It could be like a moto style boot or a Chelsea boot or a riding boot or like a slide sandal or a strappy sandal. All these like classic shoe style signatures that you can find at every price point at every season again and again. So while it can be handy to round out your wardrobe with some key classic shoe styles, I actually think it's more important to have statement shoes. And I'm going to tell you why. Wearable statement shoes that express who you are and tell a bit of your story are worth their weight in gold. 
These are the kinds of styles that will punctuate and save every look. So a great way to figure out what this might be for you is to look into your wardrobe and see what are the shoe styles that you wear again and again that you just always turn to. I know I have some shoes in my wardrobe I love to look at. They're beautiful. They have great memories attached to them. Some of them are really painful, but I'm not wearing them on the day to day and I'm not really turning to them as much when I do have even a special occasion. But if I do look at the shoes that I wear the most, write down and note what those styles are for you. So it could be, for me, it's like kind of a flat comfort sandal. It's a sneaker and it's a mule heel, for example. So make a quick list of what those styles are for you. So for me, for example, it's a slide sandal for casual days and it's like a chunky boot for running errands and sneakers for dog walks. And when I'm traveling, I love to wear kind of like a bougie slip on loafer moment to sort of dress up sweatpants or something more casual. At night, it's a sexy or strappy heel or mule. Now, instead of getting the most basic version of those styles, what I want to encourage you to think about is finding a statement version. It could be the material, it could be an embellishment, it could be a detail on the heel, it could be a wild color, it could be an exotic skin, it could be a more daring or experimental heel shape, it could be a bold metallic or like a reworked proportion. Mix it up, but if you're getting shoes that are actually the styles that you wear again and again, but in novelty and new fabrications and reinventions, I'm telling you, they're going to come in so handy on these days. Suddenly, these staple items that you have in your wardrobe that are just a little ho-hum are going to sparkle. Standard issue outfits that you've worn time and time again are going to stand out and you'll just have this new pep in your step when you pair them with more statement shoes that are still within your style signatures. After all, we can't all invest in just a brand new wardrobe each season, but I think one to a few key new shoes, a new pair of sneakers, a new pair of heels, a new boot can drastically reinvent existing pieces that you already own. I've always said from a budget standpoint, I believe that shoes and coats, any form of outerwear jackets are where you should allocate the majority of your fashion budget. The reason being these items, you want to get the best quality that you can possibly afford because they're the most hard wearing shoes. Like I said, they're in contact with the ground, with dirt, with elements, uh, with the street. It's the same thing with outerwear. It's protecting you from whatever mother nature is throwing at you. And you're wearing these two categories again and again. They're really, besides jewelry um, and you know some other accessories, they're really the main two categories that you can wear again and again, the same pair of shoes, the same coat or jacket, and you could wear them day in and day out, and that would be completely normal and actually quite stylish. I love when people repeat wear something that they love and just like wear it into the ground. I think that's actually very chic, and we'll talk about that in another segment. Also, and this shouldn't be understated, and I don't know why this isn't talked about more, shoes make people happy. When you wear a fun pair of shoes, you're not only delighting yourself, you're delighting others around you. I can't even tell you the amount of people that I have met, friendships that I have forged, ice that's been broken in social situations, conversations that have been started with people that I would have never um, spoken with over shoes. It's the ultimate way to connect with someone and start a conversation and for them to get to know a little bit about you. I believe that shoes have the ability to send a message and certainly spread joy. Boring shoes are a missed opportunity to delight yourself and those around you. Every time I go to the dentist, which is one of my least favorite things to do, you better believe I am wearing a marvelous pair of shoes just to look at and distract myself when they've got all those tools in your mouth. I'm telling you, on the day-to-day, -day, it doesn't matter how mundane the activity or the task, the grocery store, the you know, train commute, wear a fun pair of shoes and you will be so surprised how the universe reacts to you differently. So my second key point is that shoes dramatically change your physicality and the way you move through the world. 
There's no one item in fashion that has as much of an effect on your proportion, your silhouette, and the way that you move. So from their construction to their incline, to the treatment of their sole, to the height of their heel, to the sound that they make, all of these factors really change how you move through time and space. And it's all down to your shoes. Whether you identify as a he, a she, or a they, I want to encourage you to experiment with different heel heights and see how they affect you, even if you're just trying them on in the store. Wearing a block heel, for instance, gives you a completely different gait and stance and posture than uh, something that's like a slipper flat versus something that's a really clunky boot where you're going to be stomping through a space, for instance. Experiment with these, try them on, and see what makes you feel the way you want to feel. Do you want to feel powerful? Do you want to turn heads when you walk in the space? Do you want to be able to slink in and out kind of unnoticed? There's a shoe for that as well. Do you want to command attention? There's a shoe for that as well. But really think about shoes as they affect your physicality and the way others perceive you too. Just because you are petite does not mean you need to counterbalance that with skyscraper heels. However, this can be something that you want to do. An example that comes to mind is there's this woman named Julia Hart. She's on a show called Unorthodox on Netflix. Very petite. I believe she's like five foot tall. Only wears towering platforms and stilettos. Just sky high all the time, day and night. But it really has become part of her silhouette and her signature style that I think works and she owns it. And it clearly makes her feel more powerful to be given some height. Alternatively, Elle McPherson is known for wearing flats. She's incredibly tall. She's, I, I believe she's six feet tall. I've seen her once actually shoe shopping at Barney's, rest in peace Barney's, and she was just looking at, you know, the chicest Manolo Blahnik and Paul Andrew flats at the time. And there was something so chic and sophisticated and self-assured about the fact that she doesn't really wear heels very often because she doesn't need to. There's a really iconic photo of her attending the Met Gala one year and she's wearing this gorgeous kind of citrine ball gown and she's wearing flats with it. And you can't even see her flats until she pulls up her skirt to go up the stairs of the Met. And then you notice that she's not wearing a skyscraper heel like everyone else knows. She's just unencumbered and just gliding with ease in her flat. And that is incredibly interesting and powerful and unique to her. And that all comes down to the shoe. Anyone can wear a ball gown, but not anyone can wear a ball gown with a flat shoe like that and still look and feel like a million bucks. Another example is Machine Gun Kelly. He's like 6'5", and he's constantly wearing these like very clunky platform Doc Martin boots. He wears a, one black and one white. And what they do is they really enhance his stomp, his stage antics, and they give him this even more elongated, lanky, rock and roll silhouette that feels very exaggerated. It really all comes down to the shoes. Whereas Rihanna is really known to enhance and counterbalance her curves by wearing these towering open toe, often spindly stilettos. So for men, I do want to encourage you to try a low block heel to mix it up and have that in your shoe arsenal. And for women, a chunky platform boot, I think is a great style to also experiment with because it just gives you this very like commanding, assertive, heavy stomp that I think is an interesting posture and stature for a woman to embody as well from time to time. I want you to consider how you want to be perceived and make sure that your shoes are aligning with that because shoes really do send a message. You can look at someone's shoes and make a lot of assessments or judgments based on just their shoes of what kind of person they are, for better or for worse, but let's be honest, we all do it. I know I constantly look at people's shoes and try to figure them out. Are you sporty and casual and youthful? Well, then you're probably in sneakers. Are you grounded and easy and comfortable and a bit earthy? Well, then I would expect for you to wear Birkenstocks. Are you elegant and relaxed? Well, then you're probably into like just a slide sandal that you can just ease in and out of as you please. Are you rock and roll and tough? Well, then I wouldn't be surprised to see you in a chunky platform boot. Are you clean cut and proper and a bit preppy? It's a riding boot for you. Are you sexy and are you glam and are you in touch with your feminine side? 
you're going to be in a stiletto. Are you unabashed and bold? And do you not care about what everyone else is doing? Do you like to stand out from the crowd? I'm expecting a towering platform, right? Are you dainty? Are you sensible? Are you careful? I'm seeing a dainty kitten heel. Are you assertive? Are you chic? Are you no nonsense? Are you to the point? A pointed punk. Are you low key and easy and natural? It's a jute espadrille for you. Are you avant-garde and experimental? Well then, I'm expecting for you to be in one of those hybrid, maybe Prada style loafers that's got like a chunky platform sneaker sole with a more classic upper. Maybe you're in the Margella tabby style where the big toe and the rest of the toe are separated and it's kind of animalistic and paw-like. Are you expensive and flashy? Well, then I'm expecting one of the many logoed style shoes for you. Really? But regardless of what shoes you're wearing, make sure you know how to walk in them and walk properly and maybe even film yourself walking in them just so that you can get an objective view of how you look in that shoe. I'll never forget, um, I grew up wearing like uh, just a very classic sort of loafer Oxford style for my school for my uniform. And when it came to high school graduation, they actually brought someone in to teach us how to walk in heels across the stage to accept our diplomas. And uh, you'd be surprised. There was a lot of young women at this point, you know, we're 17 and some of my classmates had never worn heels before. I definitely was dabbling in heels throughout high school. I've always loved shoes. But it was so interesting because walking in heels and walking in different styles of shoe, it really is a skill. And one of my main, main tips, if I can just give you one piece of advice for walking in heels, no matter who you are, is do not turn your feet out. Point your toes forward and practice walking one foot as directly in front of the other as possible. This will give your hips a lovely feminine swivel and also just shows off the shoe best. I think you can ruin even the nicest shoe if you're walking like a penguin with your feet turned out. And you'd be surprised how many women do this and haven't really mastered the art of walking in heels. These are really important things, Ragnar. I'm helping a lot of people. Look how turned out your feet are. <laughs> One in front of the other rags. Come on. And my third and final key shoe tip is use shoes as a tool to counterbalance your outfit. The key word here is juxtapose. Examples of this could include sneakers with suits, a sparkly heel with denim, a tough boot with something way more sweet and hyper feminine. Juxtapose your footwear with your outfit to create interesting contrast and a bit of nuance and tension. The best looks incorporate contrast. They are not one note and they don't look like they're coming from a standard issued playbook. It looks like you're combining things in a unique, novel and inspiring way. If everything is too one note, too literal and too categorical, it can actually fall very, very flat. So for instance, there's a very classic shoe from Chanel. It's their cap toe slingback block heel, first designed by Coco Chanel in 1957. And it was reissued a number of years ago and is just risen in popularity. And it really is like, it's like a Chanel ballet flat too. It just, it couldn't be more classic. It's never in or out of fashion. It just is. It's an iconic piece of design, but it's very, very classic. The way to wear the shoe is not with like a matching tweed suit. It's not with a little black dress. It's not even, I would say, with something classic like jeans and, you know, a blouse. To make this feel juxtaposed and nuanced and interesting and high contrast, you need to pair it with something that is diametrically opposite to the super classic style. So what I'm saying is you need to kind of like 
fuck it up a bit and mix it up. Make it more iconoclastic. Don't wear it with classic items and fall into this kind of like ladylike trope and you'll almost look like you're dressed in costume. Wear it with something that feels modern and fresh and irreverent and I guarantee you that that will create a really unique signature mix that's just for you. Here are a few examples of some people who have worn that shoe but done it in a way that feels fresh and like there's a real modernity and pep in their step and they're not just falling into these overly classic tropes that don't really show off any of your personality. So other examples of this idea of high contrast and tension and juxtaposition using your shoes are, say like take a classic Converse Chuck. I love the um, Converse 70s actually because they have a more supportive sole with a lot more padding in them and just feel more luxurious. Wear that with a dress. Take a sweatpant and combine it with a blazer and throw a sports bra underneath and then pair it with a cowboy boot, a la Celine. These are four different items that you wouldn't think to go together, but together it creates this very interesting look where you're taking actually quite classic items, but they do not, they are not usually worn all together in one outfit and it's very interesting and fresh. Take like a bougie buckled loafer and instead of wearing it with, please God forbid, like khakis and a polo or something like that where you're just really leaning into these preppy style signatures, no, you don't wanna do that. Instead, wear it with ripped denim, something a little bit more rebellious, something a little bit more tattered, something a bit more rock and roll. Contrast and mix it up. I also think like a punky boot worn with a beautifully tailored suit is another really great high contrast unexpected combo. A sparkly shoe worn with shorts. Don't just wear the sparkly shoe with like, you know, your evening wear. Wear it for day with something more sporty and casual. There's a million more combos I could list off. Those are just a few. Bottom line, mix it up. So to summarize what we talked about, I want you to note these three style rules that we talked about. I have them down below. You can copy and paste them if you can't write them down. I live and die by these. You need to remember them. These are your personal style shoe mantras. Number one, shoes make the look. Get your shoes right and everything else will be okay. Number two, shoes change the way you look, feel, move, and your mood. And number three, mix it up. If you like this video, please subscribe to this channel, like, comment, and ring the bell down below. And while you're here, you might want to check out some of my other videos that are all about helping you hone your personal style. Let's keep this conversation going in the comment section as well. Did what I say resonate with you? Do you have a pressing shoe question? Do you have a favorite shoe? Do you have a shoe that you hate? Let's continue the dialogue. Because after all, I can literally talk shoes all day. It's actually a problem. I have multiple group chats with my friends where we're basically just, I'm giving them shoe advice. So if I could give you shoe advice, I'm happy to do that as well. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Moshe Lundstrom and on TikTok at Friend in Fashion for more tips, tricks, and fashion advice. I've linked all those below. You'll also be kept up to date on my future videos, plus the television and radio segments that I do and my work as an entrepreneur. I have a brand called Thermakota with my mother and my sister, and it's inspired by our Scandinavian roots. We make outerwear and homeware, and so you can check that out as well. Thank you so much for watching. That's all for now, but until next time, have some style.